When we take a look at the plotter, the first thing we want to do is talk about four potential traps or possible mistakes that you might have when you're using that plotter. First of all, you might have had that plotter up on the glare shield of your airplane and it could have gotten pretty doggone hot. And if that's happened, the plotter will very often warp and also shrink. Warped is not too much of a problem, although it can make it a little bit awkward. The toughest part is that it can actually shrink. If it's gotten really hot, the plotter can shrink to be sometimes an inch or an inch and a half shorter than it was originally manufactured to be. And if it's shrunk by an inch or an inch and a half, you're not going to get the right mileage when you measure a distance. So how do you tell if it's shrunk? Well, a very good way to do it is either measure it against another plotter that's brand new and you know is in good shape, or there are mileage scales on the edges of the aeronautical charts and you can put the plotter on that mileage scale and see if it's still the proper length. Now the second potential mistake or trap when using the plotter is the zero point is not at the end. Take a look at the end of the plotter. And when you get to the end of the plotter, where it starts measuring distance from, notice that the zero point here is not at the physical end of the plotter. Now, when you're used to using rulers and yardsticks where zero is always at the end, that can be confusing. And if you measure from airport to airport and you start with the physical end of the plotter rather than starting at the zero point where the mileage starts from, you're obviously going to get a wrong distance. The third potential trap or mistake on using the plotter is what kind of miles you're using. Because on this style of plotter, there are two scales. There are nautical miles and there are also statute miles. And the mileages are slightly different and therefore you have to make sure what kind of miles you're trying to measure. Now, you're normally going to be measuring nautical miles because these days airspeed indicators are marked in knots rather than in miles per hour. But make sure you properly match the scale to the way the speed is given in your airplane, either statute miles or nautical miles. Now on the other end of the plotter, or at least it's on the other end of this type of plotter, is the fourth potential mistake or trap in using the plotter. And that is, which scale are you on, sectional versus world aeronautical chart? The side of the plotter that we're looking at right here is for measuring on a sectional chart. But the flip side of this plotter is a different scale. And it's a scale designed for world aeronautical charts or WAC charts. If by accident you're using the WAC scale side of the plotter and you should be using the sectional chart side, you're going to come up with twice the distance that you would when you're using the proper scale, the sectional chart scale. So make sure you're using the proper scale, whether it's sectional or world aeronautical charts. Now the King Schools E6B also contains a handy plotter. It's a combination flight computer and plotter, and you just slide the plotter out of the flight computer part in order to use it. If you use this plotter to measure distances, it has most of the same opportunities for mistakes that the other style plotter does. One side is for measuring distances on world aeronautical charts and terminal area charts, and the other side is for measuring distances on sectional charts. So once again, you have to make sure you're using the proper scale. Now on this plotter, all the scales are expressed in nautical miles, so you don't have to worry about nautical versus statute miles. So let's review these four potential mistakes as far as the plotter is concerned. Number one is it could have shrunk or warped. The warped is not too bad, but the shrunk is real bad.
If you have any question about the condition of your plotter, measure it against a brand new one, or measure it against the mileage scale on the edge of an aeronautical chart and see if it's still accurate. Potential trap number two is that the zero point is not at the physical end of the plotter. So make sure that when you start measuring distance using that plotter, that you start at the real zero point for mileage and do not start at the physical end of the plotter. Potential trap number three is the proper scale, nautical miles versus statute miles. Most of your work should be done in nautical miles, so make sure you're using the proper distance scale. And the fourth potential trapper mistake is the sectional chart side of the plotter versus the world aeronautical chart or WAC chart side of the plotter. Make sure you're on the correct side of the plotter.